what's happening. Trump suing the Department of Justice for $100 million. That's right. So attorneys for the president have informed the Department of Justice of his intent to sue for $100 million in punitive damages over the execution of the search warrant at his Mar-a-Lago estate in 2022. So this is an administrative tort claim against the DOJ. It argues that the attorney general and FBI director uh, applied inconsistent standards and were guilty of a clear dereliction of constitutional principles when they approved this search warrant. And uh, they are now, the DOJ has 180 days to respond to try and settle this before going forward. If they are unable to reach some sort of agreement, then it will go to federal court in the Southern District of Florida, where we will see a lawsuit against the Department of Justice. And I actually wanted to play this bite as well. This was from J.D. Vance as he was making his rounds on the Sunday shows and and was kind of calling out to that point, uh, as Ann was kind of referencing, about how the media will treat the Trump campaign versus how they're treating Kamala Harris, who has not given an interview to them at this point. But this is bite two, and it's just very interesting. I'll give some commentary after we play it. You've now asked me three questions about comments that I made three years ago. Uh I wonder what Kamala Harris thinks about the fact that she supported policies that opened the American southern border. I wonder what Kamala Harris thinks about the fact that she lied to the American people about Joe Biden's mental middle facility for the office. You are interviewing me, Dana, because I respect the American people enough to sit down for an interview. I appreciate that. Kamala Harris has been the nominee for three weeks. She hasn't sat down for a real Believe interview. Believe me, we are asking. I, and, and you're I not going to get but, a disagreement but, 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 there. But the point is, Dana, you've got me for 15 minutes or however long you have me. We should be talking about public policies that matter. How are we going to lower inflation? How are we going to reduce the cost of food and housing? How are we going to close down that southern border? We've talked so little about that. We've talked a lot more about a sarcastic remark I made three years ago, I think we should talk about the issues that most Americans care about. I think that's really refreshing from J.D. Vance, honestly, because he's calling out the media for what they love to do. They love to play the politics of personality. They like to harp on a, as he references, a sarcastic comment he made three years ago. They like to be divisive instead of doing a reporter's job of trying to challenge them on their policies, say, This is your policy. Why do you think it's better for Americans? How will that economic plan work? How is it going to be paid for? How are you going to get that across the finish line? How are you going to get it uh, beyond a Senate filibuster? If, If even if Republicans have control of the Senate, how are they going to get enough Democrats to let it move forward on a vote? That that is the type of questioning that a media an independent media you'd think would be interested in instead of. Uh, the politics of personality that they become obsessed with over the the past decades. I mean, this isn't new, but you see it in a world where Donald Trump is in politics that it becomes just so aggressive and over the top. It's the the phrase Trump derangement syndrome. The media has that beyond compare of any other politician because they can't get over this politics of personality. And I think with J.D. Vance calling them out, calling Dana Bash out for it right there on CNN, like, hey, why are we talking about this? I'm on here. You have 15 minutes with me. I'll sit down. I respect the American people. I want you to challenge me. And yet they're still dealing with the politics of personality. It's a shame. It's a disservice to the United States and to the American people. But that's where we are. Let's go ahead and take a call. Let's take Scott from Nevada on line one. Scott, you're on Seculo. Yes, hi. I heard a comment from Jesse Waters last week that the reason that this particular vice presidential candidate was picked by the Harris campaign was because they know that they're running a losing campaign and they didn't want to expose other people like Newsom or Gretchen Whitmer to being tied to a losing campaign. And I was wondering what your thoughts were on that. You know, I'll say that I thought that not necessarily in walls, but I thought that at first that they thought Trump was so far ahead that you could kind of sacrifice Harris to then reset in four years. I really did think that. I was like, okay, well, this makes sense. Biden doesn't get the big loss. She takes the loss. Then it gets, because she was very unpopular, let's just be honest, until a few weeks ago, very unpopular. She takes the loss. We move on. They don't have to worry about her running in in a couple of years because they think, well, she already had her chance at the candidacy. Usually you don't get that twice. So we can move on from Harris. Now, what I think has happened, well, is the reverse, which is it became a breath of fresh air for the Democrats to not have to be dealing with President Biden who they were sadly embarrassed of, not sadly, but you know they were embarrassed of because of his uh, performance at that debate. 
that now it was a breath of fresh air to just have someone who could speak kind of. Well, and now polls are showing that. And I see, I don't agree with the fact that they think that the Harris walls are, uh, a, you know, a sacrifice here Not just now, to move yeah. on, uh, because I think they wouldn't have forced Biden out if they thought it was going to be a losing ticket, because then regardless if Tim Walls had a future in presidential politics, the amount of shakeup and shenanigans that they pulled to make this happen, even Biden talking in interviews now about how it was the party bigwigs that pushed him out, they would not have done that if they still thought they were going to lose. They would let that lose and move on. Yeah, no, I think that right now we're having a situation where they very much think that there is a pathway to victory. And look, there may be. That's why I can't be you know, ignorant to this. We got to be paying attention. We got to be clear headed. We got to be talking about policy, talking about facts. Get away from the personal attacks. They are losing a lot of voters for you when you attack Harris over things that are goofy, silly comedy. And I feel that way, by the way, about the others. Quit calling people weird, push into fake you know, reports. I'm sick of from both of them. There are clear policies from the Harris campaign and clear policies from the Trump campaign. Pick the one you want from that. But that's not how it's going to be. We're going to go to Randy calling from Ohio on line one. Randy, you're on Seculo. Hey, thanks for taking my call. I'm not big on the national polls because if she was so close in the national polls, they wouldn't be fighting so hard to rebrand her. You know, it's a very good point, Randy. Also, one thing people have to remember is that while the a national poll can be a barometer, that's not how you win an election. Where really, it comes down to the electoral college and how you're playing in key swing states. Because if if a national survey is is heavy on Democrat areas, and you look at those analytics and and where they were polling, it. It could tell you a very different picture of what the United States is looking at. But I, I do understand that it is going to be a close race. It, presidential politics is very close in no matter what year you're looking at these days. We're a very divided partisan country at this point. So I understand your point. But at the same time, it's really going to be those swing states and, and who can pull off the win in, in Pennsylvania, Michigan, Arizona, states like that. I did want. To take a minute, because we are just about halfway through. We're, we're at August 12th of this year, and I want to take a minute to tell you about the ACLJ's Life and Liberty Drive for August. Look, it has been a remarkable time. We knew July was going to be tough. August is tough. We know that. We see the rise of all sorts of costs. We know it's not easy right now, but we are involved in so many important things. There is one that come this Wednesday we're going to be able to start talking about, and I'm so excited about this one because these are when sometimes there are, and you know, we have to wait. You know, It's not like I can tell you right now because a lot of what we're dealing with is uh, the law. We're dealing with lawsuits that are being filed and all that. You don't want to show your cards all at one time. But hopefully by Wednesday, we're going to be able to start talking about this. A, a, a case and a moment that happened to me firsthand just by living in this world that we live in. I encountered something, and when I encountered it, I felt like the ACLJ had to get involved. And we're going to get involved legally and spiritually. And for the heart of the nation, we're going to do that. And you're going to hear about that coming up soon. But we're in the middle of this Life and Liberty Drive. I encourage you right now. You heard what we were doing for Tulsi Gabbard last week. You got a lot more attention, too. We're submitting FOIA requests on her behalf, preparing the lawsuits over the targeting, putting her on a terror watch list, and so on and so on. We're also defending Israel before the ICC. So we're going to be talking more about Israel. And there's a major prayer case also in federal appeals court today. That's in Ocala, Florida. You've heard about that over the years. We can't do any of that without your financial support. So right now, I'm going to encourage you, scan the QR code if you're watching. If not, go to aclj.org. Go in there, make your donation of any kind. All is doubled 